Good evening. Welcome to the special meeting of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education, September 3rd, 2015. Uh, tonight's meeting will be for the purpose of uh, the board reviewing the applicants for the position of superintendent of Livonia Public Schools. The vast majority of those uh, candidates have requested, as the, is their right by law, that they be discussed in confidence. So therefore, the majority of our meeting will be hel held in closed session. We do, however, have two applicants who have requested that their uh, application be discussed in open session, so we will have a little bit of time uh, televised tonight before we go to closed session. Uh, as I said, our closed session is anticipated to be rather lengthy. Uh, we will come back after that session uh, and uh, rejoin you, and that, at that time we will be voting on those candidates who will be getting interviews by this board. The first item on our agenda this evening is roll call. Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll, please? Mr. Centers. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Laura. Here. Mrs. McDonald. Here. Mrs. Bonifield is here. President Burton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. The next item on our agenda this evening is audience communications. I do not see anybody in our audience this evening. Is there anybody present who would like to uh, comment to the board? Seeing none, we'll go to the third item on our agenda. Uh, the third item on our agenda is the review and consideration of contents of applications for the employment from applicants that did not request that the applications remain confidential. For this portion of our meeting, we will be hearing from Mike Wilmot with Michigan Leadership Institute. So Mike, welcome. I invite you to the podium. Thank you. Good evening once again. Um, if you would allow, Madam President, I'd like to take just a minute to kind of review where Please we've do. been with this process. As you know, we met several weeks ago now and we posted this position we came to the district and we did a number of community forums and solicited from folks what they were looking for in the next superintendent what they saw as points of pride in the district additionally we um, had a button put on the district's website that allowed people to communicate with us electronically and we forwarded to you each and every response that we received along the way um, we posted this position it was connected on a link to your uh, from your website to our website directly to the electronic application form that was uh, stipulated as to being the requirement uh, we had 27 individuals complete that process there were three additional people who started the process but chose not to complete it and we had one individual who submitted a non-conforming attempt at an application uh, submitted after the established deadline, submitted in a format that was not consistent with the application form and delivered to an inappropriate address. So we set that aside and did not give that any consideration whatsoever because it was non-conforming. Of the 27 who did submit the completed application process to us, one individual has since withdrawn about 10 o'clock this morning, withdrew from consideration. So there were 26 applicants altogether. 24 of those 26 requested that their, con their credentials be reviewed in a confidential format as provided by the uh, Michigan Open Meetings Act, and we will do that, but the two individuals who did not request confidentiality means that we need to at least begin some preliminary discussion of their candidacy in a public format. So I want to tell you a little bit about each of those two people, and then I would suggest we adjourn and go into closed session, and when we come back out of closed session, uh, the board can deliberate further and discuss more about these two individuals. So the first of the two individuals is um, Mr. John Summerhill. John is most recently the superintendent of the Ishpeming Public Schools in uh, the Upper Peninsula. John served as superintendent there for a one-year period of time. He had a three-year contract with the Ishpeming uh, Board of Education but resigned his position in mid-August this year after he submitted his application here. So his application indicates that his current position is that as superintendent of the Ishpeming Public Schools, but that is no longer the case. The newspaper there, I've tried to talk to John, but have not been able to get a phone call back from him. I can tell you that the newspaper in the Ishpeming area indicates that when he resigned, he indicated that he had accepted another administrative position here in the state of Michigan. Um, and so I had to call into him today to say, so explain this, where are we in this process? John uh, previously served as a high school principal for a number of years in Centerline. Uh, the last semester that he worked for the Centerline um, Public Schools, he was on administrative leave. Uh, there apparently were some issues um, that caused him to uh, request um, severance from the district at that point, and so he was placed on administrative leave. Uh, 
Uh, we believe John's experience as a building principal was um, very well accepted and certainly the public comments that we could uh, pick up through references and find in the newspapers for his experience in Ishpeming were positive as well. But um, we don't know any more than that and we'll just leave that explanation at that point. Um, John, uh, at this point, um, has uh, an MA. Uh, he completed that master's degree in early 2000, and to the best of our research, we can find no indication that he's taken any graduate work beyond that basic master's degree uh, designation. And as you know, in the posting, we indicated that uh, an MA plus 30 was preferred. That's the standard that North Central typically uses to certify a district leadership team is a, a minimum of a master's plus 30 degree, 30 hours. Um, so that's John Summerhill. The other individual is Dr. Ann Vayer. Ann has been a teacher in the Saginaw Public Schools for the last 15 years. She's had no experience as an administrator that we can determine anywhere along the way. Uh, and for that reason, we have just kind of said, okay, that's, that's Ann Vayer. Um, there's not much more that we can tell you about her candidacy other than that she was a classroom teacher and we trust that she's uh, a very competent classroom teacher, um, but we find no evidence of any administrative experience whatsoever. So those are the two individuals who requested a review of their materials in a public format and, and I don't feel any um, compulsion to say anything more about either of those two candidates at this time unless you have a specific question you want me to address. Yes, ma'am. Would you please spell Ann's last name? V-A-Y-R-E. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the board members on these two candidates specifically? Alrighty. Then, Madam President, I would suggest that you move to go into closed session to review the other 24 uh, sets of credentials. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll ask for a motion. President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Uh, move to recess to closed session to review and consider the contents of applications for employment for the position of superintendent at the request of the candidates that the applications remain confidential. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Centers. Are there any questions or comments about that motion? Seeing, uh, seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll, please? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonnell? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. As I said, I do anticipate this to be a rather lengthy uh, period of closed session for the board. We will return back on camera at the end of our closed session period. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome back to the continuation of the special meeting of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education, September 3rd, 2015. We have been in closed session for quite some time considering the candidacy of individuals who under the law had the right to respect that their candidacy be, remain confidential. We are now uh, finished with that process. We are ready to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is item five, selection of candidates to be interviewed for superintendent position. The process that we are going to go through uh, with this, this section of our meeting, uh, we, I will be asking for a motion from an individual board member who would like to nominate an individual candidate. That individual candidate will be recognized by a letter designation. It is a random letter designation so that we do not disclose their name prior to their being granted an interview by this board this evening. Uh, since it will be a motion, it will require a second. If we have a second, we will open it up for comments or questions from other board members, if there are any. When those comments and questions are completed, we will be calling for a vote. If that individual receives four or more votes, that individual will be asked to come in for an interview with the Board of Education. We will repeat this process <laughs> as many times as needed until board members have exhausted all of their opportunities they wish to take to nominate candidates to come in for an interview. At the end of that, process when there are no more board members wishing to nominate any more candidates. Uh, I will turn the meeting over to Mike Wilmot from the Michigan Leadership Institute. Mike at that time will announce the names of those candidates that we have previously only identified by a letter 
and a brief background, uh, a brief history of their, their background that they bring to this uh, table tonight. Uh, are there any questions from board members on the process that we're about to engage in? All right. Um, may I have a motion, please? Or is there a more board member who would like to make a motion? Madam President. Mrs. Laura. Thank you. I would move that the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education offer the opportunity to interview for the position of superintendent to the in individual identified as candidate code T. This individual has experience as associate superintendent for one of the state's ISDs and has worked in the Michigan Department of Education and has a strength in legis the legislative area. Appears to be well qualified uh, applicant and will meet the desired skill sets of this school district. Support. I have a motion for Mrs. Laura, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Are there questions or comments from other board members regarding candidate T? Mrs. Laura, uh, Mrs. Jarvis, sorry about that. Um, candidate T appears to me to be a candidate who would work very well with a strong cabinet and, um, and allow the cabinet to do their jobs and therefore would possibly um, allow themselves to do some of the other things that have been uh, important in our district in the past such as um, meeting with legislators or uh, having a strong presence across not only the district and county, but perhaps across the state as well. Thank you. Are there other board members who have any comments about candidate T? Seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the role on candidate T? Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Would another board member like to make another motion to nominate a candidate? President Burton. Mr. Centers? I move that the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education offer the opportunity to interview for the position of superintendent to the individual identified as candidate code C. Support. This, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this candidate has experience as a superintendent in an Oakland County district, as well as assistant superintendent in two large suburban districts. And appears to be a quality applicant whose strengths meet the desired skill Side of this district. Support. Okay, we have a, a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. McDonnell. Are there any other questions or comments regarding candidate C? Alrighty. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, uh, we have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. McDonnell. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. McDonnell? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Do I have any other board members who would like to nominate another candidate for an interview? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis? I move that the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education offer the opportunity to interview for the position of superintendent to the individual identified as candidate code AA this candidate has experience as a superintendent two times over and has been well respected by staff and by community and appears to be a quality candidate whose strengths meet the desired skill set for this district. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis supported by Mr. Centers. Are there any questions or comments from the board regarding candidate AA? Seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 
Would any other board member like to nominate a candidate for an interview? Uh, President Burton. Mrs. McDonald. Um, I move that the Livonia Board of Education offer the opportunity to interview for the position of superintendent to the individual identified as candidate code K. This candidate has experience as an assistant superintendent and appears to be a quality applicant whose strengths meets the desired skills set of this district. Support. We have an, uh, a motion by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the board about candidate K? Seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? We have a, a motion by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Sunners? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Are there any other board members who would like to nominate a candidate for an interview with this board? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. I move the, that the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education offer the opportunity to interview for the position of superintendent to the individual identified as candidate code O. This candidate has experience as a, a present uh, superintendent as well as uh, uh, former experience as assistant superintendent with a strong financial background and appears to be a quality applicant whose strengths meet the desired skill set of this district. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. Are there any questions or comments regarding candidate O? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mr. Sunners? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Are there any other board members who would like to make a motion to nominate a candidate for an interview? No. Seeing none, the nomination process is now closed. I would invite Mr. Mike Wilmot to the podium when you are ready, Mike, in order to disclose the names of those candidates who have been selected for interviews. Again, for the benefit of those in the public, joining us this evening from the Michigan Leadership Institute are uh, Mr. Mike Wilmot, who has been at the podium for portions of our meeting tonight, along with Mr. Bill Weber. Uh, in, in addition to the two gentlemen who are present with us this evening, uh, we have had uh, Mr. Dana Winery, who has been a wonderful asset to the board, uh, helping us through the whole administrative process of, of making sure we get all of our work done in the selection of the, of the superintendent. Uh, in addition, I understand Mr. Tim Quinn has been very valuable to uh, the Michigan Leadership Institute also in this process. And at this time, I'd like to uh, thank those gentlemen uh, and those who've worked with them on behalf of the board for your work. Thank you. Uh, as a board, you've identified five individuals that you would like to uh, interview for the position of superintendent. I'm going to read those names in alphabetical order. Um, and I know that there uh, should not be a perception that the sequence in which people were nominated is an indication that it's my first choice or second choice, but rather a look at all of the candidates together and an identification of turns out to be five. So in alphabetical order, uh, Monique Beals, current superintendent of the Clawson Public Schools, prior s assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction with the Gross Point Public Schools, and prior to that with the uh, same position with the Novi Public Schools. Uh, second candidate, um, Sharon Irvine Hawkins, current assistant superintendent for HR with the Warren Consolidated School District. Prior to that, Sharon worked as uh, assistant superintendent for HR in Ypsilanti. Prior to that, as a building principal in the Northfield Public Schools. The third candidate is Michael Musery. Michael is currently the superintendent of the Armada Public Schools in North Macomb County. Uh, prior to that, Michael uh, served as the uh, director of finance for the Armada School District. And prior to that, uh, the same position for the South Bend, Indiana Public Schools. And uh, prior to that is a, a financial analysis for the um, General Motors Corporation. The fourth candidate is Dr. John Van Wagner, current assistant superintendent with the Shiawassee Intermediate School District. 
Prior to his uh, employment in Shiawassee ISD, uh, John served as um, an employee of the Michigan Department of Education, serving as a liaison, legislative liaison for the department, uh, directly involved with teacher certification, issues related to uh, core curriculum, and related to a number of other uh, instructional initiatives from the Department of Ed. And the final candidate is candidate double A, uh, Ron Wilson. Ron, former superintendent in Howell, Michigan, and superintendent in Cass City. Strong background, very well respected. Uh, those are the five individuals that we've identified. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations to all of the candidates. Uh, thank you to the many, many candidates who, uh, who applied for this position. We had uh, 27, I believe, is the correct number of, of candidates who put applications in, and we are, express our appreciation to all of those who went to the considerable amount of time and effort to consider this position and put applications in for it. Uh, at this time, we are on to item six of our agenda, which is the presentation by, Mike, uh, by, by Michigan Leadership Institute regarding the interview process for superintendent. And we will be hearing from Mr. Wilmot again. So we've, we've agreed that we're going to interview five people, and we have those interviews scheduled for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. And my advice to you is that we schedule two of those candidates for Tuesday, two for Wednesday, and one for Thursday. Because after the final interview, we have to have some deliberations, you have to have some deliberations, and attempt to narrow the candidate pool. So if that makes sense to you, we will try to schedule those candidates in that order. Uh, typically, when I talk to uh, applicants before a meeting like this, uh, I always ask them, um, so if you were selected, are, is there any day next week that would be problematic for you? And uh, I did get a couple of responses, and so we've kind of worked around those already, and we'll work to schedule the others and get that back to the district offices. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow midday should not be a, a major problem, I wouldn't think. So we're going to do these interviews beginning on Tuesday, and, and I would again indicate to you that when I did community forums, we had a chance to talk with some high school students, and I uh, indicated to them that if you concurred, I would be more than willing to provide them an opportunity to meet with each of these candidates for about 30 minutes prior to the start of their formal interview. Uh, with you as members of the Board of Education, that we would give them an opportunity to share with you in writing their feedback of their perceptions of each of those applicants. My sense is that you're okay with that direction, and if so, uh, I'll work with uh, Dr. Oquist and, and Mr. Winnery to make sure that we get those students contacted and get them arranged for those interview sites. Um, public interviews, uh, 90 minutes long, uh, here in the Board of Education room. Uh, this is an interview with the Board of Education in the public. It is not a public interview. There's a difference. Um, this is the Board's primary responsibility to hire superintendent, the one position in the district that's a direct report to the Board of Education. And as such, I think you want to solicit as much input as you possibly can along the way. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to know perceptions of people within the community, school community as to the strengths the candidates would bring, uh, and you would welcome their involvement and participation in that interview process. Typically in that interview process, we look at about a 70-minute period of time of the 90 for questions directly from the board to the candidate and the candidate to respond to the board. In that remaining 20 minutes, the time frame is such that there's an introduction at the beginning, by the typically by the board president, and an opportunity for an opening statement on the part of the candidate and a closing statement on the part of the candidate. And after the candidates had their chance to ask the board some questions as part of that interview process, then we would accept written questions from the audience. And we have a standard form that we'll have in the room. They're green in color. Uh, we'll have them in the room. We'll collect them as we get to the um, last stage. They look very simply like this. We'll get them on the table. When people come in, we'll make sure that they're in their hands so that they can write their questions as the interview proceeds. And then we'll present those questions to the extent that time remains and the questions are not argumentative or um, uh, 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 you know inappropriate given the the confines of the legal parameters and we'll hand deliver them to the board president and ask the board president to read those questions on behalf of the community um, in 90 minutes we'll wrap up we want to try to make sure in this first interview that we're treat all the candidates as closely as we can the same uh, and so we think it's important that there be a standard set of questions and that everybody understand which questions are going to be asked who's going to ask them and in what sequence uh, 
Under tab four in the manuals that we've provided for you is a suggested protocol for those interviews. And again, you'll see at the top, it's designed to be 90 minutes in length. There's an introduction period. Typically, we would ask the board president to read that, and we will customize these packets for you for each candidate to be interviewed with the appropriate name and their current title positions in there. So it's really just a matter of reading the information. Following that introduction, uh, there's a series of three or four opening questions, and then a series of questions, three or four questions, and a number of topical areas that superintendents deal with. Community relations, public relations, leadership skills, um, curriculum and instruction, finance, staff and personnel. Um, total of seven. Seven board members, seven areas. So what we typically suggest is that the board president take those introduction, opening, and closing questions, and that the other six members of the board uh, volunteer or be assigned to the do the questioning in the other six areas, your particular area of interest if you have one. Um, that way, each member of the board has an opportunity to interact directly with each of the applicants, and each applicant has a chance to respond directly to each individual member of the board. And while one board member is questioning and interacting with a candidate, the other six can be taking detailed notes in those uh, specific response areas. Uh, again, if it makes sense to you to have the board president do the introduction, the opening, and the closing, then it would be necessary for other members of the board to volunteer and or say, I'll take care of posing the questions in community relations, political awareness, leadership attributes, whatever it is. If you have any preferences or Madam President, if you'd rather just assign those, however you choose to do it as a board is fine with us, but we would suggest that we begin by identifying the areas that you're going to pose the questions in. Preference. So you, you want to have you want to handle that decision tonight yep. right now. Yep, that's fine. Uh, board members, do you have an area that you prefer to direct your questions to? And if you're if you're not right with us right now, we are in tab number four. We are on pages two, three, and four, I believe. I'm happy with handling the introduction and the closing. So we would need board members to volunteer to handle the sections of community relations, political awareness, po leadership attributes, instruction and curriculum finance and operations, and staff and personnel. If you have a preference, if you make it known. I'll take community relations. All right. Ms. Laura will take community relations. I'll go ahead and take political awareness. Okay. Mr. Johnson will take political awareness. I'll take uh, leadership attributes. Mr. Centers will take leadership attributes. Do I have someone who'd like to take her instru instruction and curriculum? I'll, I'll take that. Inst Mrs. McDonald will take instruction and curriculum. Do I have someone who would like to take finance and operations? I'll take finance and operations. Mrs. Jarvis will take finance. And Mrs. Bonifield will take what's left over. Mrs. Bonifield will take staff and personnel. I will staff and personnel. be pleased to take that. Okay. It, it almost sounds like a game of Jeopardy here. <laughs> yeah. Take finance for yeah, so 50 or whatever. Yeah. So. Or one so, great superintendent. What we've got now is board members who volunteered to take particular topical areas. And there are more draft questions here than what you can ask in a 90-minute interview and get responses to. So here's my suggestion. If you will each look at the draft questions in the area that you volunteered to question on, and choose not more than three that you would like to have posed to a candidate. Then we'll come back together as a board and have you share with the board colleagues which three questions in that area you think ought to be asked. I want to re um, reinforce with you that these are draft questions. And if in the topical areas you don't see questions that hit the topics that you want, if you will tell us what's missing there or what you really want us to focus on, we'll go back and draft some specific questions for you in those areas.
community relations, for example, has only three questions. So if you would each, you know, take a quick look at those three questions and make sure that you're comfortable with those questions. Again, the questions are designed to ask the candidate to draw upon their prior experience and draw from their personal experience base a response to the specific questions as opposed to uh, a question where there's only one right answer or only one wrong answer. Uh, we want them to be able to draw upon their experience base and present to you who they are and how they make decisions and what kinds of things they've done in the past. Mr. Wilmot, you want me to be taking the introduction and the opening questions yep. both, correct? Exactly. Okay, thank you. And I think you can do all of those as well, Ms. Burton. Yep. Are we okay with the community relations questions? Mm -hmm. Anybody desire a change in those? If not, then let's look at political awareness. There are four draft questions there. Um, can we get down to three? President Burton. Yes. I have a, a question for all of my board members here. Um, being that this is the first time we're looking at this and it's such an important decision, do you think maybe, I don't even know how we could possibly even do this or if it's something that has to be done in a public forum or not, go through them, read them, and then get back with you on which questions? I, I don't even know how that would work. We I have don't, a short period of time to do exactly. this. Exactly. I, I understand your your thought process, but I agree with your conclusion that, that I don't know the, how that would work uh, to keep us on track. Um, seeing as the questions are rather brief and, and direct, if we could take a moment and read them, uh, we can make a decision as a board right now, and if, uh, if we decide to make a change on that later, call I assume me. we can always do so. Just call me. But, uh -huh. but I, I do agree that, that to we, get it done uh, this time while we're all together and we're all looking at the document, it, it is most Preliminary, important. you know, look at it, and then if you go back and look at it overnight during the day tomorrow, you see changes, mm -hmm. just let me know before the end of the day tomorrow if you want a specific change or an addition or a deletion okay. in your topical area so that we have time to have the materials prepared for you for Tuesday with the holiday weekend. It's yep. going to be a little bit tight. So let's go ahead and make those decisions right now, recognizing that they are preliminary, and if we need to make a change, we will. Yep. But at least we'll get the, that, uh, that work largely done. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield and then Mrs. Jarvis. Under political awareness, uh, there's four questions. I would choose to eliminate question number three. Okay my choice yeah I can live with that yeah. okay I can live with that as well yeah, I can look right. exactly right. Right. Mm -hmm. so you're going to tentatively eliminate question number question three under three. political right. awareness and Mrs. Jarvis did your comment have to do with that, that was decision? my same recommendation okay thank you okay can we look at leadership attributes? Mm -hmm. And I think there's five questions there, five draft questions. Can we get three? Mrs. Bonifield. Um, I would like to propose that we keep number five. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I'd like to propose that we keep number one. Okay. Keeping number one and five, we need to choose between two, three, and four. With one other question to, to keep in the mix. I would like to keep number two. President Byrd. Okay. Are we comfortable keeping questions one, two, and five? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody uncomfortable with that decision? Mrs. Jarvis. Um, just to, because I don't want to be <laughs> too unilateral here. Question number two, while it's a good question, I would hope that um, leadership experience wouldn't vary too much based on different constituents. I'd like to see it be a, a more universal approach. And to that end, I'd like to get rid of question number two and instead keep number four. 
um, which is really the only one that deals at all with uh, with data. Okay. I'm going to agree with um, Mrs. Jarvis on eliminating number two. So we have a proposal then to keep questions one, four, and five. Does anybody have a problem with that decision, with keeping one, four, and five, or a different suggestion? That's fine. Is that a no. question? Yeah, okay. I do have a question. Mrs. McDonald. Um Well, the reason why I picked question number two, because I feel it's important, um, you know, just to find out how this individual is going to possibly interact in our community and how they would react. And that was my thought process on picking number two. Okay. How difficult I, is it to have an additional question? But it's not, and that was going to be my suggestion. If okay. you have that, that diversity of thought, then do four in that section and okay. do one, two, four, and five. All righty. And what their, our board will need to do then is to be cognizant of keeping our time. Uh, and I'm going to watch the time for you. Yeah, okay. Uh, and if I see you falling behind, I'm going to jump in and give you a little nudge and say, okay. hey, we've got to move a little faster. Mm -hmm. Already. So then you're into the instruction and curriculum area. And again, right. there are four draft questions there. Um, which ones do you want to keep? You want to add something? You want to take something out? President Burton. Hold on just a moment, please. Mrs. Jarvis and then Mrs. Bonifield. Thank you. Um, I am interested in deleting the first question in the interest that maybe not all of the candidates have actually had classroom experience. Okay. Is everyone all right with eliminating question That's number one and point. keeping yeah. questions two, three, and four in this section? Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. We'll do so. Finance, Finance and operations. Finance and operations. We have five questions. And keep in mind, too, these are questions for the first round. If we eliminate a question in this round, it certainly does not mean we can't ask it of the candidate. We're going to have uh, even more in-depth interviews uh, with the individuals that we choose to go forward from here. Just a moment, Mrs. Bonifield. Okay, Mrs. Bonifield, and um, Mrs. Jarber, and then Mrs. Uh, McDonald. I would like to suggest uh, removing number four. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with eliminating question number four? All righty. We will eliminate four. We need to take one more off of that list. I might suggest that we eliminate question number three. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, raising money and procuring funds are two totally different questions, so never mind. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that might be a question for later down the road, too. Um. Number three is going to be pretty tough to get up. That's one of those mm -hmm. questions where you, you really almost have to have an intimate knowledge of the district to be able to come up with that stuff. Ms. Burton? Mrs. Jarvis. I would suggest that we eliminate question number five, since we already have a limited school of choice program mm -hmm. and uh, are running that under our parameters that are already established in our district. Okay. Are, are we okay with eliminating question number five? Okay, Mrs. Okay. Burton. Mrs. McDonald. Um, I think it would be important for the people who were just to get an idea of exactly what the candidate's position would be on that, on schools mm -hmm. of choice, even though I know we have a limited, but that was based on the recommendations from our prior superintendent, mm -hmm. and I think it would be important to get feedback from that individual that we, we would be talking to. Okay. Is there a different question you want eliminated instead? And again, keep in mind, this is just for round one of questions. Right, I understand. But I think if we eliminated um, three and four, that leaves us with three questions anyway, right? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a board decision then. If, right. Would we rather eliminate question number three or question number five? May I offer a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
If you eliminate question number three, uh, one question that we might do is go back to community relations mm -hmm. and ask a question about your prior involvement in working with an educational foundation. Um, you have a very active educational foundation in the school community. It's designed to raise money along the way, mm -hmm. uh, and it certainly involves a broad spectrum of the community. So I think you could eliminate the question, um, you know, number three relative to how would you raise money for the district, and then build, bring in the piece with the community on the community foundation under community relations. Okay, with that. Does that work okay for Are you? All right with it, mm -hmm. board. Yeah. And then eliminate a question. Another no, I'd, question. I'd leave the other three with community relations and do four in that area. Okay. Okay. So we we'll take out three and four, and we're going to mm -hmm. leave one, two, and five. Mm -hmm. And we'll draft a question for Ms. Laura in uh, the foundation. All right. And then staff and personnel, and there's five draft questions there as well. Mrs. Bonfield? Um, I would uh, choose to get rid of two and three. Go back to that. Okay. I'll give you a moment to read through all the rest of them. Okay, we have a proposal to get rid of questions two and three. Are there any other thoughts on that in this section? Mrs. McDon or Mrs. Bonfield. Um, with uh, if we keep five, um, I might word that a little bit differently. Um. Uh, and maybe make it more, um, I guess, what have you done and what will you do? Um, and I'm not sure where it's in here. Is it appropriate at this time to ask a candidate if they are willing to move into the district? Uh, I think you have a legal problem doing that. Oh. Right, you're right. Okay, sorry, thank you. That's right. Um, I actually was thinking, I agree with you that question two is probably the weaker of the, the set. Um, but I also, instead of three, maybe I thought five, because um, while we want our superintendent to be in the schools, I, it, it's not their primary, primary job to be in the schools. Um, so I kind of, uh, thought that two and five are, to me, the questions that I would probably eliminate, but I'm open mm -hmm. for discussion. I do also think that there's a lot of value in question number three, because that is that uh, that is a good chunk of responsibility lies in that area. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Bonfield. Um, I'd like to make a plug for number five. I think um, our community is really um, wants superintendent that's out there that's visible that's easy to talk to um, for me I'd really like to um, hear how they're going to and maybe this is covered in a, in a different question and I'm just reading too much into this one but I'd really like to see how they're gonna what their plans are to interact or how they do interact with the, the community because I believe that you have the flexibility to have four questions in this area. Okay. okay. These are not questions that are going to entail real lengthy answers. Okay. So I think you could go one, three, four, and five. Okay. Are we all right with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Limiting only question two in this section. And then, Mrs. Burton, you'll take care of the closing. I will take care of the closing, yeah. yes. So that will give us the format. And again, we're going to prepare these individual packets for you. Mm -hmm. and can we, excuse me, can sure. we go back to yes. one? Yeah. Um, Which section? In the finance and operations, mm -hmm. in, in looking at, at number two, mm -hmm. or the second question, um, I'm wondering if we couldn't, couldn't change the wording of that. Okay. Because at the end, 
it, it seems to pit one program against another. Mm -hmm. Okay. And perhaps if we just word it in tough financial times, how do you set priorities when there are competing interests? Um, and we could do it between various programs as opposed to uh, specifically mm -hmm. saying struggling mm -hmm. students and keep gifted as if when you read that as if those two are competing competing against dollars, one another right mm -hmm. when we're really trying to so when we just end the question after competing interest mm -hmm. I think that right. would yeah I think that would help perhaps we could preface the question with uh, saying that in our district we have several programs mm -hmm. uh, reference ac academic programs well, they're not all like, well, well that's I would true. rather say programs. That's true, because yeah. then you got athletics and everything else right. out there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So we'll prepare these, and again, as you have a chance to look at them overnight during the day tomorrow, if there's anything you think of that you want to change, call me, email me. Uh, we'll get it taken care of here. I'll correspond back to you, Mrs. Burton, to make sure that you're, mm -hmm. you're aware and that you concur, and we'll go from there. So that's really what we need to do with you this evening. I would just call your attention again to the material under tab five, and admittedly it is sixth grade simple, um, but I think it's important for you to read prior to those interviews just as a reminder as to what we can and cannot do uh, legally. Questions that I can answer for you? It's my hope that we have met your expectations to this point in the process, and we'll continue to try to um, at least reach, if not go beyond, your current expectations through the balance of the way. And just for the, the benefit of the public, we will be interviewing then on, uh, ideally, two interviews on Tuesday, two interviews on Wednesday, one interview on Thursday. That's correct. You just Probably taking a brief recess to, to uh, gather would, our own thoughts, take a, a, a moment of a break, and then come back for a decision-making process to whittle those candidates down right. to... Exactly right. Down to two, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And so the only other final question I have for you is uh, timing. Uh, if we have two on Tuesday, what time do you want them to start? Um, mm -hmm. Six and eight, six thirty and eight thirty. Um, six o'clock is difficult for some of our board members. Six thirty is is about as early as we can comfortably start and assure that everyone can be here and and have so how about time to make it. So how about if we do uh, six thirty, mm -hmm. and um, what eight fifteen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. 6.30 and 8.15? Yeah, does that give us enough time? I don't, is there any, like, crossover? Yeah, we we'll get them in and out in 15 or? minutes, no problem. Okay. We'll move them along. Okay. Okay? Thank you very much. You guys were great to work with on this process so far. We look forward to the balance of it. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Wilma before this goes? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, other, well, seeing no other questions from board members, any any other closing questions, comments, concerns on this process? Alrighty, we are now at the end of our agenda. We thank you folks for following along. We again thank uh, Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Weber, Tim Quinn, and Dana Winery, and those who have worked along with them to help us get this far. It has truly been an exemplary job that you have been doing, and it is an enormous amount of time. Uh, as, as we've commented to one another, the seven board members could not be accomplishing this to the high level of, of competency that you are because of your background experience in human relations with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Winery and with the deep knowledge base of the current administrators uh, in Michigan and outside of the state of Michigan from Michigan Leadership Institute. So we thank you for doing a, the job very, very well for us. We appreciate it. At this time, we don't have nothing else on our agenda, so we are adjourned. We'll see you next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>